I was kneeling near a lady. I did not see her face, but I heard her say, Take care of them, they are mine. Bring them to Jesus. We are really as the children of Mary, as people who realize that Mary is at the center of our faith as Catholics, that Mary is our mother, that Mary is our queen, and Mary is our leader in the battle for souls. But all of creation, all of the entire cosmos, was waiting for the moment in which this young woman would say yes to God. In a certain sense, that encounter between Mary and the, Gab and the angel Gabriel in the house in Nazareth is the turning point of all of history. Fear not, teach them to say the family rosary, and all will be well. I will be with you and your children. Bring them to Jesus. Mary is the one who brings God into our world and makes it possible for us to be reborn by grace, to be transformed by God's love, and to live in this world with our hearts set on the life of the world to come. And today, in a certain way, we think about Our Lady of Fatima, and that is this beautiful statue that is visiting Ireland during these weeks. We we're talking a little bit about the con conception of, of Jesus at the very beginning of Mary's experience of God. Then we went forward 12 years when Jesus is lost and found teaching in the temple. But if we go forward another, say, 1900 years, we come to our own time. We come to the 20th century. We come to a time in which the battle between Our Lady, the mother of Jesus, and the dragon, the beast, has become very, very strong in the 20th century, and indeed in the 21st century. That struggle between good and evil, between light and darkness, between salvation and damnation, between all that is beautiful and all that is degraded, becomes especially strong a hundred years ago, in the last century. We had the cataclysm of the First World War, a war that was unbelievable in the amount of blood that was shed on this continent. And something dark was born in that period. And Our Lady, who is our mother <coughs> by grace, in a certain sense pondering the realities of divine revelation in her heart, knows those things. Our Lady comes to Portugal, to the little children of Fatima, to warn us about the consequences of a lack of faith, the consequences of turning away from God, to put us on guard about what was going to happen, and to give us the means of resistance, which is the Holy Rosary and prayer and devotion to her and to her son. So those three things, that's what Mary is asking us for, and that's what Fatima really leads us towards. A great devotion to the life of prayer, a great devotion to the Holy Rosary, a willingness to sacrifice for our faith, a willingness even to endure martyrdom for our faith, and then thirdly, a merciful heart, a soft heart. That's what God wants in us, a merciful heart, a heart that is soft, a heart that welcomes, a heart that loves, a heart that suffers. If we do those three things, we will be her sons and daughters. And we will be able to live our faith in these incredibly challenging times. doesn't promise us that the church will have an earthly triumph on this, in, in this world. My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus tells us, doesn't he? Nowhere in the gospel does he say 
that as history goes forward, the church will become more and more powerful, more and more successful, more and more glorious, and then the end will come, and he will come back and congratulate us on how well we've done in his absence. <laughs> That's not what will happen. The church's life will follow the same trajectory of the life of Jesus, which is hiddenness, and then public acclaim and apparent success, betrayal, crucifixion, and resurrection. Where we are on that curve, I can't tell you. Mary knows. But she came to Fatima a hundred years ago almost in order to prepare us for the times in which we live and to give us the means of resistance to the, the world in which we find ourselves. And those means of prayer, sacrifice, and mercy. So, for me, as someone with a great devotion to Our Lady of Fatima, who was ordained a priest on May 13th in 1989, it's a great joy for me to celebrate this Mass with Our Lady here in this beautiful convent of the Sisters of Mother Teresa. Thank you.